Welcome back. Please share, subscribe, and comment. Aeroacoustics is a branch of acoustics that studies noise generation via either turbulent fluid motion or aerodynamic forces interacting with surfaces. Noise generation can also be associated with periodically varying flows. A notable example of this phenomenon is the aeolian tones produced by wind blowing over fixed objects. Although no complete scientific theory of the generation of noise by aerodynamic flows has been established, most practical aeroacoustic analysis relies upon the so-called aeroacoustic analogy proposed by Sir James Lighthill in the 1950s while at the University of Manchester, whereby the governing equations of motion of the fluid are coerced into a form reminiscent of the wave equation of classical, i.e. linear, acoustics in the left-hand side with the remaining terms as sources in the right-hand side. History the modern discipline of aeroacoustics can be said to have originated with the first publication of Lighthill in the early 1950s when noise generation associated with the jet engine was beginning to be placed under scientific scrutiny. Lighthill's equation, Lighthill, rearranged the Navier-Stokes. Equations, which govern the flow of a compressible viscous fluid into an inhomogeneous wave equation, thereby making a connection between fluid mechanics and acoustics. This is often called Lighthill's analogy because it presents a model for the acoustic field that is not, strictly speaking, based on the physics of flow-induced slash generated noise, but rather on the analogy of how they might be represented through the governing equations of a compressible fluid. The continuity and the momentum equations are given by del rho del t plus nabla rho v equals zero del del t rho v plus nabla rho v v equals minus nabla p plus nabla tau where rho is the fluid density, V is the velocity field, P is the fluid pressure, and tau is the viscous stress tensor. Note that VV is a tensor, C also tensor product. Differentiating the conservation of mass equation with respect to time, taking the divergence of the last equation and subtracting the latter from the former, we arrive at del 2 rho del T2 equals nabla, nabla, rho VV, plus nabla P minus nabla tau. Subtracting C0, 2 nabla 2 rho, where C0 is the speed of sound in the medium in its equilibrium, or quiescent, state, from both sides of the last equation results in celebrated light hill equation of aeroacoustics. Del 2 rho del T2 minus C0, 2 nabla 2 rho equals nabla nabla. T, T equals rho VV plus, P minus C0, 2 rho, I minus tau, where nabla nabla is the Hessian and T is the so-called Lighthill turbulent stress. Tensor for the acoustic field. The Lighthill equation is an inhomogeneous wave equation. Using Einstein notation, Lighthill's equation can be written as del 2 rho del T2 minus C0 2 nabla 2 rho equals del 2 T i j del x i del x j. T i j equals rho v i v j plus P minus C0 2 rho delta i j minus tau i j. Each of the acoustic source terms, i.e. terms, in Tij may play a significant role in the generation of noise depending upon flow conditions considered. The first term rho viVj describes inertial effect of the flow, or Reynolds stress, developed by Osborne Reynolds, whereas the second term, P minus C02 rho, delta Ij, describes nonlinear acoustic generation processes, and finally the last term tau Ij corresponds to sound generation slash attenuation due to viscous forces. In practice, it is customary to neglect the effects of viscosity on the fluid as it affects our small in turbulent noise generation problems such as the jet noise. Lighthill provides an in-depth discussion of this matter. In aeroacoustic studies, both theoretical and computational efforts are made to solve for the acoustic source terms in Lighthill's equation in order to make statements regarding the relevant aerodynamic noise generation mechanisms present. Finally, it is important to realize that Lighthill's equation is exact in the sense that no approximations of any kind have been made in its derivation. Landau, Lifshitz's aeroacoustic equation in their classical text on fluid mechanics. Landau and Lifshitz derive an aeroacoustic equation analogous to Lighthill's, i.e., an equation for sound generated by turbulent fluid motion, but for the incompressible flow of an inviscid fluid. The inhomogeneous wave equation that they obtain is for the pressure P rather than for the density rho of the fluid. Furthermore, unlike Lighthill's equation, Landau and Lifshitz's equation is not exact. 
it is an approximation. If one is to allow for approximations to be made a simpler way, without necessarily assuming the fluid is incompressible. To obtain an approximation to Lighthill's equation is to assume that P minus P0 equals C02, rho minus rho zero, where rho zero and P0 are the characteristic density and pressure of the fluid in its equilibrium state. Then, upon substitution the assumed relation between pressure and density into asterisk operator, we obtain the equation for an inviscid fluid sigma equals zero, 1C02 del 2P del T2 minus nablet 2P equals del 2TIJ del XI del XJ, where TIJ equals rho VIVJ. And for the case when the fluid is indeed incompressible, i.e. rho equals rho zero, for some positive constant rho zero, everywhere, then we obtain exactly the equation given in Landau and Lifshitz, namely 1C02 del 2P del T2 minus nablet 2P equals rho zero del 2T caret IJ del X I del XJ, where T caret IJ equals VIVJ. A similar approximation in the context of equation, asterisk operator, namely T is almost equal to rho zero. T caret is suggested by Lighthill CEQ 7 in the latter paper. Of course, one might wonder whether we are justified in assuming that P minus P0 equals C02, rho minus rho zero. The answer is affirmative if the flow satisfies certain basic assumptions. In particular, if rho much less than rho zero and P much less than P0, then the assumed relation follows directly from the linear theory of sound waves C, e.g. the linearized Euler equations and the acoustic wave equation. In fact, the approximate relation between P and rho that we assumed is just a linear approximation to the generic barotropic equation of state of the fluid. However, even after the above deliberations, it is still not clear whether one is justified in using an inherently linear relation to simplify a nonlinear wave equation. Nevertheless, it is a very common practice in nonlinear acoustics as the textbooks on the subject show, e.g., Novelnik and Ostrovsky and Hamilton and Morphe.